Welcome back to Nash Awesome. You've guys waited long enough. Here comes my Star Wars review. Oh boy. Yeah, this is going to be a long video, but you know what, uh, let me freshen up real quick. We got some blue milk. Weird. It's not blue anymore. Jeez, I hope it's still good. Ugh, it's spoiled. I guess I kept it in the fridge too long with all the Star Wars spoilers. Ugh, yuck, yuck. Oh boy. Oh man, Jedi craves not adventure, but a Jedi would never crave spoiled milk, I'll tell you that much. Alright, on with it, on with it. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> okay, so I put my notes on another video because um, obviously I can't read them off the same phone I'm recording the shit on. Unless there was a way to do that the whole time, then I didn't know about it. But um, I was really good at taking my time and spruce up this review. But I think it's more genuine and a lot more hilarious if I just read off my notes. And these notes are accessible to you. It's on my uh, Daisy Ridley shout out video. <laughs> um, yeah, there's spoilers on that video too. I should have left a warning. But um, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay. So, hold on one second. Got to find my... All right. All right, well, Star Wars Last Jedi notes, all right. Force, um, Force. The Force Order, the First Order reigns, despite that Starkiller base just got wrecked. What? And the Rebels are on their desperate escape. Escape from what? Really, um, they're evacuating the same spot from the last movie where they left off on, where, you know, they all have that epic pose. You know, that, that really fuzzy feeling you get when you see them all posing together? Yeah, they're just running away from that scene now. Um, I'm assuming, okay, with all the plot holes I find, I'm going to patch them up for you guys. Because, you know, I got headcanon. Alright, I think that, you know, Starkiller Base is a huge-ass project. It was a big deal. But it's like, you knock down a tower, you know, you didn't knock down the whole state. There's plenty of other people left, so I'm assuming they just had the sheer numbers. How did Kylo Ren and Snoke pull this off over the course of, what, like four or five years? You know, I have no clue. I'm assuming they just have the numbers for it. Um, yeah, hyperspace is a trip, you know. You see that big-ass dreadnought pop out of nowhere. And uh, I know for sure that you can bump into things in hyperspace. You actually have to uh, plan a route. A smooth sailing route and I just imagine that you know the bigger your ship is the more likely something will be in the way so uh, kudos to those guys for being able to get there through hyperspace it's such a big ass fucking ship oh man um let's see what else we got here guns and shields in attack mode <laughs> that made me laugh so hard I just imagine 2,000 attack points um yeah Hux is pretty smug for just losing Starkiller base He's quite a comic relief, actually. Um, it's funny because, you know, they're like, you know, uh, Poe Dameron, you know, tries to call him. It's like, yeah, holding for Hux. And then Hux is just giving him shit like, how dare you? And he's like, yeah, still holding for Hux. Uh, you know, Leia has a message for him about his mom. But <laughs> I think that goes in deeper about, um, deeper about Hux. I'll get into that. Um, we don't know who Hux's parents are. I think that's just as important as Ray, actually. Um, yeah, Poe is too damn good of a pilot. And is BB-8 force sensitive? We'll get into that in a moment. Um, yeah, he's not hurting anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This lady's like, oh, but he's not going to penetrate the armor. And this guy just like fucking yells at her. He's aiming for the cannons. And it's like all these uh, guys are bitching about like this feminist agenda. Dude, there's a couple ladies get put in their place in this movie. What the fuck are you guys even talking about? What are you even butthurt over? What the hell? Like, did you see a different movie than I did? Like, not even uh, ten minutes in, you know, this lady's being yelled at. Like, how the fuck do you... <laughs> how do you even? Alright, um... Yeah. 
And then uh, BB 8's patching like this electricity leak. And it's just kind of hilarious because it's like, does electricity work like water? The Star Wars universe, so it's just like a like. How does a short circuit move to another uh, part of the board? Like you know the electronics board. Like you you'd assume if it's leaking electricity, that little circuit won't be good anymore. I don't know how that works. You guys tell me, man. I'm not too in depth in the lore, but I try because I'm trying to fix these plot holes. Um, the music score is pretty okay. Actually, when you see the bombers come in and they play that music. I don't know, it just gave me a familiar feeling, like 2001 Space Odyssey, just something beautiful about classical music combined with uh, science fiction and big scary ships. Like, I really like that. That resonates with me. Um, yeah, nowadays, fantasy involves countless deaths. There's nothing more you want to fantasize about, <laughs> like nothing better than fantasizing about like uh, being the only survivor in a big fucking war. Like, who wants to <laughs> sell toys about dying, you know, why not, dude? Uh, I'm down with that. Let's see. Yeah, the First Order did a great job wrecking those bombers. They were, you know, they did a great job. But when Poe started fucking shit up, they started abusing the Force theme. Like, I thought, bum, ba, -da, ba, -ba -da, da was strictly for, like, Force users. But, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Poe is Force-sensitive. That actually goes into something else I'll uh, put on later. Uh, that'll, you know, hit the topic. I can't even talk. I'm just trying to wing this. Um... Yeah, and then Snoke makes contact, and Hux makes a bitch-ass face out of nowhere. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, Snoke and Hux have the same face. They got the same eyebrows going on. How is nobody talking about this? Snoke and Hux are pretty much the same guy. How do you guys not notice this shit? All right, um, I wish I got to see uh, Finn's bandage. Because, alright, Kylo Ren has a sick-ass bandage that covers his face, and I never noticed until the second viewing. It actually goes all the way down his neck. And, um, yeah, we never got to see Finn's kick-ass spinal bandage. Does he still have it on? Is he fully healed? What's going on with that? Um, let's see. I could relate to Finn 100%. I don't know, I just see him walking around in the fucking, uh, in that weird suit leaking all that garbage. I'm just like, you know, I've been in some really weird situations, awkward situations like that before. I can relate to Finn. I really can. Um, Ray's face when Luke throws a fucking lightsaber. Dude, <laughs> oh my god, I don't know why. She just made a really weird face. It just, I just couldn't stop giggling in my seat. Um, and yeah, Luke is just chilling. He's playing some fucking Minecraft, you know? He's just chilling. He's building a little world. You know, putting stones up, fishing for stuff, having some milk. Um, yeah. Why the hell does Luke not give a fuck about Leia? Why would he even leave a map? And um, I'm assuming that what happened is the same way they trace people through hyperspace. They Someone, I guess, like, the only person he trusted with the coordinates was BB-8 or something. Or some sort of robot or AI system was able to track where he was going. And I don't know how that little piece of the map got lost they're fighting over. But I'm assuming that he did not make the map. Someone else had to make the map. Someone who knew him intimately. I'm assuming Leia did through the uses of the droids. Um, yeah, and then, like, I forgot what Chewie said, but, like, uh, Chewie pops in through the door, and Ray's like, yeah, he says, it's like, you can't tell Luke what Chewie says. Like, wh where have you been? Have you listened to anything that Leia has said or Han or any of them? Like, Luke knows what uh, Chewie says. And don't actually tell me that he's been so disconnected from the Force and from everything that he actually forgot Wookiee speak. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you freaking kidding me? Um, uh, I'm assuming that she just didn't know better, you know? I like how um, you see Hux in Snoke's little chamber, and uh, it pans in through uh, Kylo Ren's point of view and starts giving me theories. Like, Kylo Ren is... Uh, is an avatar for the audience. Not necessarily the whole audience, but the little angry fan nerd audience. Like the people who hated The Last Jedi, that is Kylo Ren. <laughs> He's their avatar. Oh man, my sick went up. But yeah, Kylo Ren's like an avatar for those angry fan nerds. And I can totally see it, and I kind of appreciate that actually. Yeah, the angry nerd is Kylo Ren. Yeah, he's the avatar for those angry people. And how much time even lapsed between the last two movies, like, uh, between, um, 
Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens and Force Awakens to this movie because it seems like they were just doing that pose and boom, shit's going down already. Like, what? What? <laughs> what? Um, yeah. Yeah, and then now he's treating... Yeah, Snoke treated the hell out of Kylo. He used a little smash attack, a little quick lightning. Pulled some weird Pikachu shit on him. Just <laughs> a little flash of lightning. You see it for a half second. I thought that was pretty badass. Why the fuck would Kylo launch out? Like, I know he can't control himself, but damn, you know? You don't fucking hit your boss. You'd figure that someone like Kylo Ren would be smart enough to know that. But <laughs> he's an angry fan, for crying out loud. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm really happy that he broke the mask on those lights. Because I always wondered how those lights were built. I didn't know if the metal was on the outside, if the plastic was on the inside, and I think it's like the metal's on the inside of the plastic. Because when he broke those lights, I was really happy because I used to do handiwork. Now I know how those lights are built. <laughs> now I can appreciate the backdrop a little more. It's funny because Ray just says, there's no light left in Kylo Ren, and he's destroying lights. How cool is that? <laughs> oh, man. That's insane. Um... And then, yeah, and Luke is all like, you think I came to the most unfindable place in the galaxy for nothing? And I'm like, why the map then? Someone else had to make the map, not him, obviously. Who made it? Yeah, and then uh, when, <laughs> when Luke is milking that space cow, I like how Ray just kind of looks at it and it looks away. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can't even imagine what's going through the character's head. Just like, oh god, oh, <laughs> he really knows his way around a titty. Um, yeah. And then why did Chewie disappear for a whole scene? And I later figured out who's trying to radio for help. Otherwise, wouldn't Chewie help with some of the training? Think about it. He could have sparred with Ray with sticks, any of those things. And doesn't he want milk? Can't he stick around for some fishing and milking and shit? You know. And then like you go to the most unfindable place. And trying to get away from the Jedi religion. So you go to the most concentrated point of where the Jedi started, the origin of the Jedi, you go there? It's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's like you quit Yu Gi Oh! and you go hang out at a game store. Like, what the fuck? I don't know how to uh, patch that plot hole. I'm just saying maybe it's the Force that's a sheer irony. You know what I mean? You go to get away from something and you can't, you can't run away from it. And I ran, I ran so far away, couldn't get away. He just can't get away from the past, can't get away from the Jedi shit. He found the most unfindable place, and of course, in the most unfindable place would be the most sacred information about the Jedi. It's just irony. The Force is irony. I'm telling you. And then Rey knows this place, and I think maybe she's some sort of reincarnated character. Or a clone. I don't know, I'll get into that later. And then, like, Luke says, what's so special about you? Good question! That's what everybody's wondering. Uh, people give her this Mary Sue shit. A Mary Sue is also a Gary Sue. It's just somebody who's really good at shit without any explanation. But lucky for you guys, I actually do have an explanation for that. I'm actually really creative with this shit. I could patch this shit up. Um, yeah, Luke is just being a dick. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, just sitting next to a window while you're in hyperspace looks really wrong. There's a scene where uh, Leia's just in the window and there's flashing lights. Like, uh, man, I wish I had an example. Like, how would you feel if there's lights flashing behind your head really bright? Like, I guess maybe she was too deep in her thoughts and her emotions to even care about the seizure attack behind her. But I wouldn't be by any windows if I was in hyperspace, especially if shit goes wrong or you bump into something on the way there. Well, if you do bump into something while you're in hyperspace, you might as well be dead. Um, yeah. And then how did how did uh, how did Leia imagine beating the the dreadnought without being wrecked? It's like you don't always solve problems with getting in an X-wing and shooting stuff, but you saw that laser going <laughs> like about to kill all of them. What else do you do? Blow some shit up. I honest to God want to hear what she wanted to do. I don't know, maybe she did have force powers and she was thinking like, hey Poe, just tap into the force, everyone's doing it nowadays. 
<laughs> Who knows? I, I can't patch up that one, but I'm sure there's a really good explanation for it somewhere out there online. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Snoke has just like this ridiculous sized ship. And it's just so huge. Like all the antis are upped in this new trilogy. It's just such a huge ass ship. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, yeah, just again, how do you keep that thing from fucking up in hyperspace? I don't know. Maybe they have like a sophisticated technology. You never know they had the perfect route for something that big. They probably had to take a detour, but it's hyperspace. You know, detours are nothing. You're going faster than the speed of light. Um, yeah. I forgot the lady. I forgot her face, but she's this one uh, X-Wing pilot who talks to Poe a lot. And a lot of people are like, oh, look, it's another woman dressed up in military gear. They're trying to brainwash your children. She gets wrecked, too. I don't see any feminist agenda. She's just sitting there ready to take off. She fucking blows up. Like, dude, a lot of women get wrecked in this movie. It's not a feminist movie. So, like, you guys need a candid. You, you know, fucking fight me in the comments, man. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, you fucking crybabies. <laughs> Yeah, and chicks lose battles too, so like, I don't know what your problem is. If you're all, all in that Mary Sue Ray bullshit, you know, just, just gotta quit, dude. You know, just quit your ranting. <laughs> I should take my own advice. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, Leia's voice sounds kind of weird after years of drugs. I'm sorry, Carrie Fisher. I'm sorry for the Carrie Fisher fans. I didn't mean to say it like that. It is what it is. People like Ozzy, we know he did drugs. People like Carrie Fisher, she's down to earth. Do you think the drugs had anything to do with it? I think so. I think drugs make you very down to earth. But, um, yeah. Sure. Oh, we gotta follow them. Paul, you're gonna be demoted. Yeah, just your voice is kind of weird. I never did the research for this. I don't know what the fuck a mouse droid is. But every time I would see the First Order shots, I would think to myself, What the fuck is that mouse droid even doing? And then say it's cleaning up the floor and shit. Why are you going right to the front where all these badasses are just to fucking, you know, maneuver around them and loop backwards? Who knows, man? I don't, I don't know what a mouse droid does. If you, if you fucking, I'm just going to find out in my free time. But if you guys could tell me before I do, let me know. I don't know what a mouse droid is. As far as I know, it's a Roomba. It's a Roomba. Um, yeah. It's obvious as fuck that Hux is related to Snoke. Maybe, like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, all white people look the same. They have the same fucking furry eyebrows. They got eyebrows like mine, but furrier. And they stick further out. They're both ginger eyebrowed. I really think that there's some weird extended universe tribute thing going on. And uh, I believe that uh, if J.J. Abrams is to fix the Snoke co controversy, all he has to do is implement cloning. It's uh, almost obvious Maybe this is my own headcanon going wild, but it's almost obvious that Hux is some sort of product of Snoke. How did it get there in the first place if Snoke was in charge? Why do they look so much the same? Think about it, guys. Really. Um, yeah, and then people are like, oh, yeah, Leia uh, was flying like Superman? That's fucked up. Dude, she force pushed herself. Oh, but she didn't have any training. Well, you know, this time around, a lot of people can use a force without training, you know? And uh, it, it's like what they say in the movie, like the force isn't something strictly for Jedi. It's kind of part of every living creature. And I heard the explanation is like some people get super strength when they're trying to save their child's life, you know, and then they burn out all their muscles, though, in the process, but they will save someone's life. It's the same idea. She used every fiber of her being to stay alive, and that caused her to go into a coma, aside from the vacuum of space. And, um, okay, she goes into, yeah, 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 excuse me. People argue that, hold on, that blue milk. People argue that um, when she comes in, and she makes it to the door, and they open the door for her, People are saying that the vacuum space should have pulled all those people out. And they abruptly cut to her on the stretcher to cover that up. But the thing is, um, people are also complaining about the dreadnought, uh, not the dreadnought, the bombers. That, uh, oh, it just opens and there's space and you're not suffocating and the bombs are going down. Well, someone made a big uh, diagram that there's a little force field or a little even like a little pressure bubble that keeps the air in. 
and that the bombs just fall down with regular gravity, once they pass that little bubble, uh, the perpetual motion just keeps them going. So I think it's the same kind of concept. You never know there's a little safety mechanism or a, even a bubble of some sort. Not a bubble, but you know what I'm talking about. I have a feeling that there's some sort of uh, safety precaution that allowed Leia to get in there without having those guys fly out of hyper, like into space. Like if she's tapping into the force, she should know something like that is gonna happen. Like she should know better. So I think that there really is some sort of mechanic to explain why nobody flew out into hyperspace. It has to do with the little force field gravity thing that explains the bombs. And yeah, you could say that we're stretching it because we love Star Wars, but why the fuck not? J.J. Abrams, take my ideas, dude. Um, all right. Yeah, and the Porg Chewy scene was really fucking weird. I didn't like him uh, kind of like about to eat a Porg, and the Porg is like, Ew. you know, it's a good metaphor because the past fans are starving for content, but they can't harm the new shit in fear of losing what they love. And it's true, like, Chewie doesn't want to lose his humanity, he doesn't want to be a bad person, so he's not going to go eat that porg, you know? So he's kind of starving for the, for the fate of, not starve, he's starving for the better, for the good, you know? He, he, for, he, he rather starve than hurt a, a fucking porg after seeing how they feel about him eating another one. So I, I think that's kind of like a metaphor for the, for the old school people. But, um, you know, you got to starve a little bit, you can't have all your questions answered at once. We don't find out who the Knights of Ren are, but uh, we have another we have another movie to explain that. If they don't tie these loose ends by like the next movie, uh, you guys are gonna be in trouble. <laughs> uh, Lucas Films, Kathleen Kennedy, you're gonna be in trouble if you don't wrap up these loose ends. Um, but I have good faith. I have faith in these guys. Yeah, and uh, let's see. There's a lot of warping issues in the footage. I don't know if that's just something that uh, happens at the theaters around me, but both times I saw it, there'd be something weird going on with the screen where the footage would warp just very subtly. Ugh, what can you do? Wasn't about to go get a refund. I had to take the rest of my notes. And I wonder how often R2-D2 swears, because like Luke and R2 were just chilling, and he's like, watch your language. And I'm just like, man, go back in the whole prequels. Well, not the prequels, original trilogy, my bad, my bad guys. Go back to the original trilogy and the prequels and just listen to R2 and say like, hmm, is he swearing here? Is he swearing there? I'm pretty sure if you guys had like all the time in the world you could find out when he's swearing when he isn't. And uh, that was just the most epic scene in the movie personally when R2-D2 plays that little hologram for him again. That was really heartwarming. Uh, I think that was probably the best scene in the entire movie. Come fight me, bro. Um... Yeah, I think it's kind of funny that uh, Ray's sleeping and he pops up over her while she's sleeping and it's like training starts tomorrow. And, you know, if you if you heard about this movie, that's the same thing happened to Kylo Ren. He, he was sleeping and he was looking at him while he's sleeping like, mm, I think he's turning. <laughs> it's a little out of character for Luke, but I kind of see where these guys are trying to pull that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. And then rest in peace, Akbar. Oh my God! How do you how do you kill Pepe? How do you kill the Star Wars meme? How do you kill Star Wars Pepe? I swear to God, you better bring in one of his children or someone else of his species. Hell, like, do it be really entertaining if we had a new generation of Jedi and just one of them was an alien, just just any of them. And the funny thing is, like, uh, when they sh I'll I'll get into this later, but like, usually when they show gore or violence. They want to do it to something that doesn't have a face or something that's not relatable. So if you're going to see something get chopped up, you're probably going to see an alien get murdered. You know what I mean? Order 66, you know? Yeah. So I think alien characters should be back in Star Wars so we could get away with more gore. And, uh, you know, no one relates to alien characters that well. But uh, I know it's contradictory. I'm like, you got to save Akbar. you got to make a reincarnation of Akbar, one of his children. And then... Feel free to gore him up because we don't relate to him. <laughs> you know, take it as you want. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, fucking Holdo. Yeah, Admiral Holdo, I think she's hot. Yeah. Fight me, bro. I think she's hot, dude. Uh, you know, I don't know what it is. Just big fucking beautiful face, big ass blue eyes, purple hair, and a fucking halo. She looks like a little angel archetype. Dude, she's fucking hot. I always thought she was hot since Jurassic Park. She never lost her charm. Uh, 
And yeah, I really don't like that metaphor. It's like, we will, like, we are the spark that will light the fire, that will burn the barn, that sends a burning cow, that sets the leather barn on fire, that burns the grass, that burns a station, and that fire will carry over to the next county, and that fire will grow, and then maybe into a forest fire that will finally burn the first order down. It's like, you gotta, man, the little metaphors about the sparks and fire and whatever, like, maybe you should use other things next time. Like, we are the, <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me do this. We are the current of water that will break down the dam that is a first order because they're blockading our passion and our views and our hopes and dreams and we will become beavers and break down the the dam even though beavers build dams. You know what I'm saying? Like, use water next time. Use a different element to get your point across. I'm, I'm tired of hearing fire. But, you know, I, I get your point. You know, a fire starts from a spark. Something small grows big. You know what I mean? Um, let's see. Yeah, Haldo is kind of a bitch. A little sarcastic. But, you know, the little trade-off is that she's hot when she's mad. <laughs> At least I, I think so. <laughs> she hot, though. <laughs> and, and then, like, she didn't tell Poe a plan. She didn't tell him any of her plans. But she did tell him to stick to his post. She gave him an order. It's not like she was just like completely ignoring him. Now, now I don't know what you guys are uh, bitching about. I don't know what you guys are bitching about. Uh, yeah, and then Finn is funny even when he's serious. I can't unsee it. He's kind of like Ernest. He's like black Ernest. That's a good thing. That's not racist or anything. I really like Ernest. I really like Finn. And out of all the characters, especially how everyone likes Kylo Ren, I project myself into Finn. All right. Finn is my wish fulfillment. I'm a goofy ass dude. I would probably do the same shit he would do in his situations. But uh, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, having any Asian chick fangirling over you is wish fulfillment. That's when I decided Finn was my avatar. I really liked Rose, man. She's, she's hot too. She kind of reminds me of Peggy Hill. Oh weird, in my notes I say Finn reminds me of Peggy Hill. <laughs> no, I meant Rose. Finn isn't anything like Peggy, unless you want to prove it. And then, yeah, Finn sucks at lying like a real black person does. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just, I'm being honest. Like, out of all the, the, the fucking videos and, like, media I've seen over time, there's just a reoccurring theme where, like, black people who suck at lying. It's And that's a good thing. You know, don't you want to be part of an honest culture? Someone who holds true, you know, values and stuff? And then when you stick to truth for so long, when you try to lie, you suck at it. You know, I just think that was funny. I think I'm terrible at lying. Am I black? I don't know. You tell me. Um, that's another video, though. All right. Um, yeah. And he just wanted to fucking escape for the hot Jedi chick. She, he was just trying to get an escape pod so he could find Rey. He just wanted to get with the hot Jedi chick. Like, can you blame him? Like, the more I hear about Finn and the more I hear people bitch about what he does, the more I relate to him. <laughs> It's just my, he's my uh, wish fulfillment character. Oh uh, man, priorities though, priorities. You gotta escape for Ray. Um, yeah, and how does a pipe cleaner know so much about uh, tracking other ships and stuff? Unless the handyman experience did it for her. I don't know, man. I'm assuming that I guess she spent so much time on these ships, and maybe that's her hobby, that uh, she knows the ins and outs of different kinds of spaceships. That's my explanation for it. But when I first saw that, I was like, wait a minute. How does she know all this shit? She's just a pipe cleaner. But, um, yeah, um, Finn and Poe making a plan. That was Wayne's World as fuck. Remember the scene in Wayne's World where they're like, then we're going to go bust in here, and then we're going to go get the satellite station up, and then we're going to get Alice Cooper over here. <laughs> or that was uh, Wayne's World too. but you know what I mean. Just the way that they're plotting, it was just so epic. I just couldn't get enough of it. I really liked it. Uh, it was my favorite part. Well, aside from the Luke part, but, I mean, like, that was really cool. Just I like seeing teenagers plan shit. Uh, yeah, and it's funny because doesn't Holdo have access to the holograms? They're just doing all this shit where they're laying out, oh yeah, this is the ship, and over here is where the weak spot is, and then we can go over there, and then we can put on the code, and then we can stop their tracking, and then you'd figure, uh, Holdo would have access to the browsing history, but I guess not. I guess they're all independent network computers or something. I don't know, they're still living in the early 90s with their computers. Uh, let's see. And then, like, oh, how'd you two meet? 
I guess it's good luck. It was like, good luck or bad luck? And funny thing is, if it was bad luck, it would explain a lot of shit. <laughs> it would explain those 30 minutes we lost. <laughs> if you guys know what I'm talking about. I, I enjoyed those 30 minutes, though. All right. And then the fucking... Yeah, we could get through the biohexycrypt, and there's like biohexycrypt for Bing Bong. Yeah, I'm down for that. Biohexycrypt. You know? Who needs a blockchain? Who needs encryptions? I could use a biohexycrypt for my Bing Bong coin. You know, you trade Bing Bong for French fries, you know, in case you haven't not, you know, in case you didn't know about that, you know, you trade the Bing Bong coins with my face on it for French fries, you know. It's you know, participating locations. Let's see. Uh, Maz Kanata, she's a fucking gangster as fuck. She's like a Puerto Rican aunt. <laughs> I just like how she's taking care of shit in this little hologram. You know, a little union strike gone wrong, but you know, she's she's uh she's really cool. She's like a little she's like a petite Puerto Rican aunt that knows how to take care of business. I like Maz. If you don't like Maz, cause oh, it's another woman handling a gun. That's military subliminal programming. So to each their own. I think she was pretty damn cool. And if you think about it, if you're in a fucking war and it comes down to brass tacks, some chick is going to probably handle a gun. And would you be surprised if she's good at it? Like, really, guys? <laughs> you guys make me crack up. I swear to God. And then, yeah, I kept I kept noticing that Rose is fucking hot, dude. Holy shit. Come fight me, bro. Fight me over that. She's not, she's not fat. Everyone's like, oh, fat Asian chick. That's bullshit. No, she looks fine as fuck in that jumpsuit. <laughs> Come fight me, bro. For real. <laughs> and then, if you really think about it, it was Maz Kanata's fault that they went to Canto Bite. <laughs> so if you want to hate on anybody, hate on Maz, dude. And then, like, Canto Bite and horse Pokemon, dude. Those little horse things. <laughs> I'll get more into that later. And then, um, yeah, you see the, the force Skype call? I always thought that shit was possible. Because um, you see that shit in Flash Gordon, and Star Wars was based off of Flash Gordon, and then when uh, Leia's reaching out to Luke in Empire Strikes Back, you just see their faces, but Leia looks like she's zoning out a little bit in the cockpit. What if she could physically see where he is? Ahem, I know where Luke is. Turn the ship around. So, I don't know. You could say, oh, that's not possible. That's bullshit. It's been done already. Go look in the old movies, faggots. All right, um, let's see. Yeah. More, I, I spelt a lot of the shit wrong, so I'm trying to take these notes as fast as possible and not miss any details. Uh, yeah, and it's it's more funny for Kylo, because there's people who haven't done... Because they're... What the fuck? I don't know, it's just funny, because, like, uh, can you see behind me? I can't see what's behind you. And it's just, like, it's supposed to be an emotionally charged scene, and he's just kind of casually talking about, yeah, this is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. And then, uh, yeah... And then, yeah, <laughs> why does Luke quit Yu-Gi-Oh and then hide at a game store? Why do you quit the Jedi religion and hide in the one place where there's the most Jedi shit buried there? I don't know. Irony. The Force is sheer irony, man. And then he's like, oh, yeah, he asks, uh, fucking, he asks Ray, what's the Force about? And like, oh, the Force is the power to control people and lift things. And he's like, everything you said is wrong. I'm like, wrong? Like, what the... What? <laughs> no, that's exactly what they do. Like, okay, maybe he made the point that it doesn't, you know, belong to you. You're tapping into something that is inside everyone. And uh, you're even tapping into the other person you're manipulating. But still, you're still lifting rocks and controlling people. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, go patch that up. I can't. Um, it's like the force is not about lifting rocks. And, of course, she does that later. Everything they say you don't do, they end up doing. And then why did Luke have a grass leaf in his hand in the first place? This is the funniest part. So he tells her to reach out, and she physically reaches out, and he starts tickling her on the hand with the leaf, saying that's the force. Why did he have that leaf in his hand before the scene? What the hell was he going to do with that? Is he just fucking around? Is he just like, you know, poor man's fidget spinner, a little grass leaf? I don't know. I, maybe he anticipated to do some crazy antics because he's like a, I'll quote Urban Acolyte, he's like a crazy kung fu master. Once you reach a certain level of mastery, you kind of lose your mind a little bit because you know that like everything is so fluid, everything's so subtle that you could be yourself. You could be crazy as fuck and still be the master. Um, I think when you gain that much power anyway, you go a little crazy. 
But it's funny because uh, you'd figure that power would make you crazy, but he's not powerful right now because he's cutting himself off from the force for some reason. So, yeah, that, that needs some patching up just a little bit. And then, yeah, I just noticed that <laughs> when Ray touches the fucking ground, I know there's nothing wrong with her fingers. Her fingers aren't wrinkly or whatever, but for some reason they just look like chicken fingers <laughs> touching the damn rock. <laughs> I don't know. She just looks like she has some chicken fingers. And then, um, yeah, Luke needs to wash his damn face. He's getting way too close to uh, Ray's face with that dirt on his fucking cheek. Like, wash your face first before the damn training, dude. <laughs> like, for real. Unless that's grime that won't come off because you don't got access to soap from like a week ago. <laughs> You're fucking motorboating <laughs> that space cow. <laughs> and that's for another fan fiction. Am I, what I, am I right or what? Anyway, um, yeah. And then Ray's force vision. Kind of reminded me of some stock footage, but <laughs> like stock footage of the plants growing. But uh, I really liked what they did there. It wasn't something you see in Star Wars a lot, but I'm not even kidding. I used to read the old manga series, and when they're explaining the Force to Luke in uh, Empire Strikes Back, they show you like a beautiful scene of water. And it's funny because um, that never happened in the movie, and now it's happening in this movie. I wonder if they read any of the mangas. I, I really wonder if they got some uh, inspiration from that. And then, um, it's weird, because, like, why does focusing on the dark make the floor crack? She starts, like, talking about what she feels and, like, you know, life and death, everything in between. But wait, there's more. There's a darkness. Oh, it's real dark. Oh, it's cold. Bah! Fucking <laughs> the ground cracks, and I think the subtle uh, suggestion is that she's stronger in the dark side than the light, and that's why it cracks so easily. But um, you never know; she has some probably some dark side lineage in her. And then, uh, yeah, and then some, somehow water goes whoosh, you know, like in reverse all over her, and then she appears wet. I'm just like, was that was that like a subliminal money shot right there? Was that like some sort of subliminal money shot? I don't know. That was kind of weird. And then, uh, yeah, after she gets dunked in water, her lipstick stays intact, which I thought was hilarious. Or, you know, you know it was lipstick. And then Luke is so jaded, he can't even sense shit like he used to. And it's weird. And then I guess uh, Chewie's just making contact the whole time. So it's like, where was he during the training? Where was he during any of this shit? He should have had some milk. And I thought, um, yeah, uh, I'm just cutting to a part from the end real quick. Uh, Kylo tries to drive the lightsaber through Luke and it doesn't happen right and I thought wait a minute Was that what uh, should have killed him because uh, when Kylo has a force vision with Rey and then Rey's on the little water island Kylo has water dripping down from his glove unless he's up to something no good But no, he has some water dripping down. It's water. It's water dripping down his glove so I'm thinking like if uh if you were to hurt somebody during like some sort of force projection would like or attack them when they feel it and it's weird because like uh, Ray shot the projection of uh, Kylo, or her mind's projection, more like it, and uh, he just felt it, but he didn't die. But the water transferred over somehow. That was really wacky. Ugh, excuse me. And then Kylo's kind of right about uh, Luke. He's being fucked up, and uh, yeah, just bickering with Kylo was some sort of weird vibe when she was yeah. When she was, like, uh, fighting with Kylo through the Force vision, I don't know why, I just had flashbacks to high school. <laughs> it's just like, nah, you don't know what's going on. No, she, no, my friend Jeff told me that you were at the corner store talking shit. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah, just some weird high school shit. Um, yeah, and then <laughs> Kylo was like, I am a monster. And I'm just like, Kylo's a monster confirmed. Two, <laughs> 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense. Special effect, once per turn, you discard a, a card from the opponent's hand. If it happens to be a monster card, discard two more cards. If there's any monster cards in those two cards, you discard the entire hand. Damn, Kylo's broken as hell, dude. I put him in my deck. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then not everyone was white on Canto Bite. The first shot was an alien uh, black lady, which is really fucking weird. Like, everyone's complaining, oh yeah, look at these evil white people. This is some anti-white agenda. Dude, like, at least 30% of those guys are black. Don't give me this shit. I, I almost bought this weird agenda bullshit. I almost bought some of that. And I went and saw it a second time, and I didn't see any of the shit people are bitching about. So that's really weird. Uh, and yeah, Star Wars slot machines are badass. The little fucking turning slot machines. 
Oh man, those are really cool. I want a slot machine like that. Make it happen, Lucasfilms. Make an adult Star Wars bar where you could gamble with the legit machines they had in the movie. And then, guy puts into a BB-8 because he's drunk. I thought that was pretty funny. He, um, he has a coin slot. Ugh, who knows what that's really for? You never know. Uh, <laughs> robots procreate that way and they send the plans to a 3D printer and that's how they have children. And then, um, yeah, there's obvious Jewish music in the background. So I think that was uh, <laughs> the Star Wars guys trying to nudge nudge at us like, yeah, the Jewish conspiracy. The Jews control everything. I don't know. I just think they're just having a good time using the same instruments from... I think it was like the same kind of idea. Um, yeah, it was just a little subtle Jewish music in the background. Just sounded like the... The cantina theme. I don't know what you guys are bitching about. All right, unfortunately, not all of my notes actually made it to this uh, video I posted earlier. You see, I used that video to store my notes because I put my notes on this phone that I'm recording with. And uh, since they're not all on this other phone, I got to stop here. So I guess I'm going to have to make a part two, which really sucks. I wanted to get it all crammed into one sitting. I'm sweating up a storm. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's this hoodie and the bright light in front of me. I got the window open. I'm sweating a fucking storm. But uh, yeah, I'll be back with part two very soon. Thanks for sitting through this bullshit. I appreciate your views. Um, yeah, send my Daisy Ridley song to somebody who works at Star Wars. I really want to hear someone who works at Star Wars listen to Daisy Ridley, riddle me this. Why are you so fucking hot? <laughs> I, came, I came up with that off the top of my head. I thought that was really funny. Um, someone has to show somebody at Lucasfilms that little bit. All right, I'll be back. I got to fix my notes. Alright, I'll see you later. Part 2 coming up in like less than a half hour. Alright, I'll see you guys.